Hello and welcome to the Total Entertainment Podcast with me, Paul Collis. And today we're taking a look at Royal Blood, who are on tour and are in the Motor Point Arena today. The show is quite a large show actually. We have eight trucks and four tour buses. Currently it is 11.52 and they're just starting to get the trusses in the air. None of the line arrays uh, are up in the air at the moment because you've got a lot of work going on with the picker either side of the stage where they're getting the rigging still put in place to winch up the next set of trusses. Currently on stage you have an LED wall which is arced and uh, that's all connected by an arced truss. You have a separate truss with some LED uh, strips on stage left. I assume that the same thing is going to be built on stage right as that's still completely under construction. Centre stage you have a uh, grid truss with a shed load of moving lights and then you also have a feeder truss feeding that square circle of light. And what is a feeder truss? Well a feeder truss is a hanging structure which doesn't have any lights on there it holds all the cables so the so there's no strain on the power and data feeds and it can hang there very nicely in a good position but one thing that you have to understand is with feeder trusses you have to make sure that the feeder truss moves at the same time as the truss that it's feeding or you'll end up with snapped cables currently the LED wall at the back the stage the arts LED wall at the back of the stage has been winched up and they're still adding layers onto it I've got a funny feeling that they're loading the last layer on now as we speak because there's not much higher that truss can go possibly one more layer after that max but I'd like to think that it's matching the height of the LED strips on stage left stage left's line array is been winched up to working height but are adding on the last couple of layers and these line arrays there are too wide so far and I'll get back to you on that one later on. In front of the stage you have a massive wall of subs which is 10 wide which are all laying next to each other with just a little bit of stage exposed stage left and stage right. It's a standing gig tonight, so the mixer's all the way at the back of the arena, pretty much close to the forward doors, and the show tonight is near enough sold out. So, it's looking pretty tasty as a show, it really is. And I'm looking forward to listening to a nice uh, heavy rock show. Not that I know much about Royal Blood, but I'm sure I'll find out soon enough. We'll be back after this. So not only does Master X Media have a series of podcasts, but we also have a series of books. The first book is actually two books, it's volume one and volume two, of a tribute to working at sea. The best fiction is based on truth. This is a compilation of short stories, rants and poems loosely based on the author's experience at working on a cruise ship. Some of these stories are based on actual events, but highly exaggerated, whilst other stories are pure fiction. The title of the book, A Tribute To, is fitting with the tone of the book because, like a tribute act, it is a blatant altered reality where you can enjoy it knowing it's not quite the truth. There are things of alcoholism which used to be highly prevalent within workers in the cruise industry, as well as stories with a sexual nature. So sit down, relax, and enjoy the ride of A Tribute to Working at Sea, Volumes 1 and 2. All of these books are available on Amazon and are available in paperback and on Kindle. And the links for all these books are in the description below. And we're back. Royal Blood, an English rock duo, filmed by Mike Kerr, who's on vocals and bass guitar, and Ben Thatcher, who's on the drums, and they're from Worthing, and they formed the band in 2011. Their sound is anchored by Kerr's unique bass playing style, which sees him using various effects pedals and amps to make his bass guitar sound like a standard electric guitar and bass guitar at the same time. 
The self-titled debut album was released in August in 2014, with their second album How Did We Get So Dark following in June 2017, and their third album Typhoons was released in April 2021. So the current members is, as I said, Mike Kerr on lead vocals, bass, guitar, keyboards and piano and Ben Thatch on drums, percussion and piano as well. And the uh, touring musicians at the moment, JD Scantleberry on backing vocals and electric drums and Zareth Davidson on backing vocals, electric drums and you've also got Darren James on keyboard. Then you've got former members Matt Swan on drums and percussion and Joe Dennis on guitar. So they've got nominated and won quite a few awards actually. So in 2014 they were nominated by BBC for Sound of 2014 and then they also got nominated for the Mercury Prize out for Album of the Year but they only nominated they didn't win. In 2015, that was a bumper year for them. So, for the NME Awards, they won the Best Live Band and Best New Band. For the Brit Awards of the same year, they won Best British Group. And for the Kerrang Awards on the same year, they won Best British Newcomer. In 2015, they were nominated for Best Rock and Best Push Act for the MTV Europe Music Awards. They got a Q Award for Best Live Act and they were nominated for Album of the Year for the Classic Rock Magazine Awards. And finally in 2015 they won the Breakthrough Non-Metal Band and Artist Award from the GMA Awards which is the Global Metal Apocalypse. And in 2017 they were nominated for the Lost 40 Blackjack Artist Award and they were nominated for the Best British Group for the, Brit, for the Brit Awards in 2018. So a nice young band with some good accreditation. I mean, that's some serious awardage and, uh, and nominations since 2014. It's really good going, really good going. We'll be back after this. The name's Vert. Percival Reginald Vert and I run the PR Vert Detective Agency. The year is 2055 and the police have been defunded. So if you need a police investigation, the police will charge you a thousand big ones a day. Because of this, the government introduced the PI Act, where the private investigators can undercut the police so justice can become affordable. These are my case files. Percival Vert is no hero. He is a low-life scumbag and the full embodiment of how not to be a man. He cheats his way into getting work, he objectifies women and is quite a disgusting human being, if you can even call him that. Gumshoe is intended to poke fun at everyone that takes life too seriously and directly towel whips the modern day Puritans in the balls because they have forgotten the fact that when something isn't funny in real life, it's probably hilarious in the land of fiction. Come and listen to Gumshoe every Wednesday. The links are in the description below. And we're back. Let's check out Royal Blood supporting artists, and that's the Amazons. So, the Amazons are a rock band from Reading in Berkshire, formed in 2014. The band's debut album rose to number 8 in the UK album charts. They have also been named a band to listen to in 2017 by NME and The Independent, as well as BBC Radio 1. The band were included in MTV's and BBC's brand new for 2017 and Sound of 2017 long list, respectively. All Music described them as an indie rock group known for crafting catchy and melodic arena rock anthems suitable for singing along. So current band members you have Matt Thompson on vocals and the guitar, Chris Alderton on guitar, Elliot Briggs on bass and Jay Emmett on drums. So their discography is the Amazons, which is self-titled, and that was released on the 26th of May in 2017, and it was released by Fiction Records. And then their second album, 
was released on May the 24th in 2019 on Fiction Records and the album was called Future Dust. They also have a live album called Come the Fire, Come the Evening that was released on the 29th of June in 2018 under yet again Fiction Records and their singles were Stay With Me, Night Diving, In My Mind, Little Something, Black Magic, Junk Food Forever, Ultraviolet, Palace, Mother and Doubt It. So we'll have a look at their accolades and they won in 2016 the Cure Awards Best Breakthrough Act, MTV Band New for 2017, BBC Sound of 2017 and in 2017 they got the Telegraph the, the best album of the year. So not bad for a small group that's uh, starting out and maybe we'll hear more from them in the future. Yet again I haven't heard anything about the Amazons and I'm quite interested and intrigued to see what we're going to get once the show starts. We'll be back after this. 30 Years Since is a sci-fi story podcast which is full of dramatical moments and a bit of gratuitous violence. The first series was originally done in first person so it, the character is just telling a monologue and then the second series and onwards became more third person so it was more of an in-depth story and uh, you have all the characters actually interacting with each other. Great set of sci-fi stories. So, 30 years after an alien invasion, which uh, the humans lost, and the first story arc is now over. So we've got plenty more story arcs left to tell from the land of 30 years since. So why not check it out? The links are in the description below. And we're back, so we've got some progress since I uh, last had a look at the uh, stage area and the screen is fully operational and and it's paired up to the media server which is talking to the camera at the other end of the arena in the mixing position. It's given off a nice crisp and and black and white image. That's possibly just how it's set up for uh, having a quick go over just to test the signal. Also you have the stage left line array up in the air and it is too wide and 16 speakers deep. They're currently building the uh, smaller line array which is going to be winched up and pointed out 45 degrees for surround sound effect. The stage left LED strips are being uh, rigged up as we speak and as a uh, builder section it gets winched up another bit, another working height and so on and so forth and they're currently forking onto the stage some of those bits as well. Additionally a circular truss has been uh, put around the uh, middle grid that's hanging in the uh, middle of the stage and this circular truss is just full of mole phases. So yeah it's going to look very very good, very very tight nice bit of working space that that's uh, encompassing and I'm looking forward to seeing the final product once they've switched it all on st- and start tidying up the uh, lion design and when I say tidying up of the light design is it's been programmed as a palette so all they do is from venue to venue they load up the palette of uh, groups or sequences and then they just update the position update the palette and every queue in the entire show's queue stack on the lighting console will then it will just track all the way through and that's it so it'll look perfect every time no matter what arena you go to providing that you programmed in palettes and not done it queue by queue by queue now that banging you could probably hear is where the mixer position is getting fully mojoed uh, which is our security barrier and it's a very heavy uh, crush proof and tip and topple proof barrier it's going nowhere once it's uh, all put down and they're also majoring in the front of the stage 
given a nice little pit area and for the exact same reason so just build a neat section and then they're going to lay down the rubber matting and then slide it into position and then bolt it all together nice and easy as for the rest of the build the stage is near enough all set up they have another curved section on the uh, floor of the stage which is a nice little array of strobes in a nice semicircle arc around the back of the band risers and this band riser is on two different levels I'd assume the guitar lower and the drums higher so the guitars can get down from the riser and have a little mooch around along with the other concert session musicians so stage left is completely yet uh, rigged up ready to go and stage right is near enough complete they're just laying in the last level of led strips the line arrays on stage right is complete up in the air and they're starting to move surplus equipment and boxes either side of the stage ready to put behind the mojo barrier we'll be back after this if you're a singer a musician a cabaret artist dancer actor and you want to promote your show or promote yourself and you want to have a conversation you could do this by coming on our show the email address to contact me is musterxmedia1983 at gmail.com and come on our show and we're back so the Amazons walked out and the screen kicked to life with their logo center and the two live camera feeds that open up in windows and started transmitting data either side of the main screen so yeah the live feed logo live feed and it looks pretty good because they had it nice in they had each live feed in a nice bold window it looked pretty switch especially on the high-res LED screen that they had now because of the size of the stage being uh, taken up because most of the stage was being taken up by the risers for, for Royal Blood setup what they did was they set the Amazons drums on the lower riser and the rest of the Amazons were downstage along the whole front although they were moving around a bit and not and filled up the front of the stage nicely and interacted with each other nicely lighting wise they were given the stage left and stage right led floor floods not the whole array on the floor just stay just downstage left downstage right and that basically gave them just nothing but side light which was enough to illuminate most of the faces as well as the stage in a nice lovely bright wash every member of the amazons were covered by one robo spot and and they were also given the use of the mole phase lights in a circle above the stage which was used throughout the show and also they had their own unique set of lights for their section of the show which was an LED flood at the top and bottom of booms which were lined with, LED, with an LED strip as well they were bright and in your face and had a very nice effect to it so design wise it was mainly flash and trash and you say people say oh flash and trash this flash and trash that well flash and trash has a time and a place and for the type of music that they were playing it was definitely the right kind of flash and trash it just reminded me of how shows used to look in the 80s and early 90s before you had technology take over a show and yeah it looked really good it just reminded me of being old school with a modern twist of the uh, new technology now sound wise it was really clear if you take into account of the monster PA system that they had the sound engineer still managed to get the 22 carat clarity oh I love that expression 22 carat clarity because it's true it's absolute it was absolutely clear you could hear absolutely every aspect of the band it wasn't all clumped together in a loud mess there's depth and body within the mix and the sound design it was perfect absolutely perfect now how would I categorize the Amazons because they're a British band they weren't modern Britpop because they're a bit heavy for modern Britpop they weren't indie 
because they're slight they even though they had indie vibes to it they were still slightly heavier it's like, but i just couldn't put a cat i think they're pretty much in a category of their own or as i found out later on in the evening when i uh listened to royal bloods because i didn't know much about them although i did recognize a few of their songs I would categorize them together so i would personally label it as heavy brit pop but that that's just my opinion other people have other opinions on it but that's how i'm that's how i choose to categorize them anyways for me the amazons were okay they were quite enjoyable and they did have stage presence although i couldn't remember any of their songs later on that evening for me They've not hit their peak of creativity. They're definitely on their way to getting it. And as musicians, they are great musicians. And they're definitely coming up and getting bigger and bigger. And I reckon, give them another album, they'll have some truly memorable anthems. They've definitely got that ability about them. Definitely. I just hope that one day they'll come back as a headline group so we can see them with more material and more memorable songs. But with the amount of albums that they have out at the moment, it's understandable. They're up and coming. They are definitely on their way to bigger things. And you can tell that, especially with their stage presence. And that is one thing to look forward to. We'll be back after this. A tribute to men that hate their jobs is a brutal but witty portrayal of working a job you hate. In this podcast, there are themes explored in which happy workers simply wouldn't understand unless they listen to these cautionary tales from a man that lost his ideal job because of the global pandemic. Be warned that this podcast contains strong, offensive language that some listeners may not want to hear. In addition, this podcast is definitely not recommended for younger audiences. The links for this is in the description below. And we're back. So the house lights faded as did the screen on, and the stage was lit up by blues. Nothing but blues, but, but different shades of blue. Then the stage snapped to black and within an instant, all the lights started to strobe white as, the, as Royal Bloods came onto the stage. They added in the back floor strobes and added in the strobes just below the screen and started chasing them off in a circular motion. And then with all the uh, with all the profile units in the overhead grid, those all fired up next and they were in a tight focus and were going off in a circular chase as well. And it just looked like a massive lighting whirlpool and it was a really, really good effect, very well programmed. And then the band started up. And as the band started up, the screen came to life with a full screen projection of what was going on the stage and now a vision mix in between between the pit cameras, the stage cameras and the uh, front of house cameras. And they were getting very good close ups from all angles and visually it looked amazing to see the lighting effects on the screens in close up as well as looking at the lighting effects from a distance whilst you're in the audience. Throughout the entire show, they kept repeating that whirlpool effect. And why? Because it looked amazing. They didn't overdo it though. It had variations, it had changes. So one of the variations was, instead of being straight down, the whirlpool effect was brought towards the audience. And it just looked really, really impressive. Some great, great programming there. And they also had a lot of washes, a lot of and a lot of impact lighting and when i say impact lighting when you've got a heavy part of a song the lighting console would uh, would track the sound from the drums so so the lights would flash in perfect time to to the kick drum or a uh, section on the guitar or even part of the vocals it was all perfectly matched and that was definitely done on the fly with a lot of practice each scene that they programmed in on the lighting desk was definitely there so all the lights were there in position and the correct colors and it's just the operator who would adapt certain parts of the of the uh, lighting design to match the beat in, in case a member of the band was slightly off beat he could then train the lights to follow that particular beat it's 
great, great operating there. Sound-wise, wow. Once again, this monster sound rig, you was expecting it to be a massive wall of, with gratuitously loud volume and not, and not much clarity, but in reality, damn. It was a yet again another crystal clear 22 carat wall of sound. So much clarity within it, and you'd expect that they would have overdriven this noise with as much punch as possible because they had the ability to do that. But no, they didn't. They kept well within the normal parameters of volume, decibel wise that is. And when I say normal, they were on the top end of normal. So the most they the most they peaked at was on the C rating, and that was 121 decibels, and that was directly in front of the line arrays in the pit. And around the rest of the building, they were coming in around about 110, 111 decibels. So a very nice balanced mix of sound and it was not offensive to the ears whatsoever and it was great because you're able to you'll be able to hear all the guitar effects because the lead guitarist well the only the main guitarist he plays the bass guitar but he but his guitar sounds like he's playing a six string now how does he do that well he's got a massive array of pre-programmed effects pedals. I also learned that if he was to miss a pedal, the guitar tech in Guitar World has an emergency override set of uh, guitar pedals that are paired up to his. So if he was to miss it, the guitar tech would then press the correct effects pedal and it will come out. Now, how does he get all those sounds in those guitar pedals? And it's quite literally, whilst he's devising these songs, he'll be sat in a room going through all the different amplitudes of every single effect type and experimenting until he gets, until he gets a sound that he wants. He'll then record that particular effect onto the pedal and that's it. So fortunately, I actually was given a set list, which is not usually the case. Normally we're kept in the dark because they're trying to keep things top secret. So, Songs, the songs that they did tonight was Typhoons, By The Maker, Lights Out, Come On Over, Trouble's Coming, Hook, Line and Sinker, Honey Brains, Little Monster, How Did We Get So Dark, Blood Hands, Million and One, Limbo, Loose Change and the final song was Figure It Out. Although they had a free song encore which was All We Have Is Now, Ten Ton Skeleton and Out Of The Black. So how did the show go down with the fans? They loved it. There was lots of moshing, there's dancing, there's screaming, there was uh, lots of applause after every song. People were crowd surfing, which you're not supposed to do in modern arenas. You do get told not to, but people still do. People getting pulled out from the pier and sent to the sides. It was a nice, lively show and everyone really, really enjoyed it even waiting for the train after the show had finished and after the get out had finished you had people at the train station talking about how much they loved that show which is always good to hear when you're at just standing in the background waiting for the train knowing full well that a show that you worked on everyone enjoyed if you've enjoyed today's show please hit like subscribe and share and if you haven't already done so why not check out more of our content which you can find on our website which is www.masterxmedia.info and i shall catch you next time bye for now